Hello, Oscillator Sync here and welcome back to another video in our series where we're exploring the sound design potential of the Korg Volk FM. So this video is all about envelopes. So let's start by talking about what an envelope really means in sound design. So an envelope is a way of describing how certain characteristics of a sound change over time from the point where uh, we press a key till when we release it. And along with LFOs, which we'll get to um, in another video, they're one of the two ways that we can govern how a sound changes over time. So just thinking about envelopes in our familiar world of, um, of analog subtractive synthesis, if I just reach over to my monologue, um, typically uh, in analog synths, um, there are three main types of envelopes that we have. We have an envelope which might govern uh, the volume of a sound. We might govern how uh, the filter is affected. And we might govern how the pitch is affected. So there we had uh, ways of controlling the volume of the sound over time, the harmonic content of the sound over time, and also the pitch of the sound over time. And those three uh, ideas are all present and correct in the Volker FM as well. But instead of the filter and the VCA like we have in uh, an analog synth, in Volker FM we're going to be controlling the level of the various operators. If an operator is acting as a carrier, that's going to be controlling the volume of the sound. If an operator is acting as a modulator, that's going to be controlling the harmonic content of the sound. And then uh, there's also a global pitch envelope as well. Now the most common type of envelope uh, particularly in analog sense, is the ADSR envelope. So that's A, attack. That's the amount of time that it takes for you to get to the full level of the envelope, whether that's uh, the filter or the pitch or the uh, volume of the sound. We then have D, decay. That's the amount of time that it takes for you to drop down to the S, sustain level, which is where you stay until you let go of the key at which point you release R over the amount of time there back to zero. A, D, S, R. Now, the Volker FM and the DX7 that it's inspired by laugh in the face of your puny ADSR because the envelopes that are on uh, offer on the Volker FM are supremely powerful and flexible. So I've got a uh, basic patch set up here. Sounds like that. What we have here are two operators. Operator 1 is acting as the carrier, uh, the thing that we hear, and operator 2 is acting as the modulator, the thing which is changing the sound of uh, operator 1. So let's dive into our edit menu and let's take a look at the various different parameters that govern our envelope. So the first thing to note is that these parameters are identical whether or not we're talking about a carrier or a modulator. So at the moment we're going to look at uh, operator 2, which is our modulator, so we're going to be changing the harmonic content of our sound. But um, these envelopes operate in exactly the same way if we're talking about the carrier in terms of governing its loudness. So let's talk about these parameters. Um, they can operate, if you wish, exactly the same way as an ADSR. If that's what you are after, uh, we can definitely do that here, but they can also offer us a lot of other things as well. So uh, there are eight parameters that we need to talk about, and they kind of uh, they're kind of paired up to work together. So the first parameter that I want to talk about is EGR1. Now EGR1 is how fast after you've pressed a key, the uh, level of the operator is going to jump up to EGL1. Now I chose my words carefully there when I said how fast. Um, and, and I use that those words um, because when we're looking at EG R1, 
as we turn it up, that jump is going to be faster. Now that's backwards when compared to um, when you turn up an attack knob on a traditional ADSR envelope on an analog synth. Usually as you turn up the attack knob, things get slower. But here we're talking about a rate, e.g. envelope generator rate one. So the higher it is, the faster it is. So at the moment we're at 99, which is the maximum, which means that we're not even hearing the fact that um, this envelope is jumping up because it's happening all but instantaneously. But as we make it slower, we should be able to hear the start of that note have a bit of a, a slope up uh, with our harmonic content. So as we turn it down, can you hear that there? It's really subtle, but there's a whop at the start of our note. And that's this envelope turning up the level of the operator, the modulator, quickly, but no longer instantly. And as we turn it down further, getting that wow kind of thing happening. And as we turn it down, we can get really quite slow. And as we get down towards single digits, these envelopes move really, really slowly. So we can create really long, languid sweeps. Isn't that cool? So if we want to make big, long, evolving pads, man, can FM do it? It's still going. I mean, we're not even at the slowest rate either. We can really, really um, draw out sounds. I love building these sort of big evolving sounds on the on the Volker FM. Okay, so EGR1, how fast when you press a key, we jump up to what is defined in EGL1. Uh, so for the moment, I'm going to make that instant. Um, we'll play about with it a little bit in a moment. So moving along, we have EGR2. Now, EGR2 is how fast, after EGR1 has finished its jump, we are going to move on to EGL2. So, if we wanted to um, do that traditional ADSR thing, we would set EGL2 to be lower. We'd go over to our EGR2 and we'd set it fast maybe but not not super fast we can hear we have that drop down and then we're kind of sustaining afterwards if we want to make that drop slower we can do so and again if we want to make it really really slow we can do this kind of sounds as well. Okay, so that's using it as a traditional kind of D section of our ADSR. But what's really cool is that as we move on, would you believe we have an EGR3, which uh, tells us how fast we move to EGL3 after we've done the second part of our envelope. So you can do things like having a that initial sort of attack, we'll set EGL to a little bit higher. So we've got that initial twang there, but then we can have EGR3 be a lot slower and set EGL3 below EGL2. Maybe a little bit higher on EGL2 a bit slower on EGR3. Now we can create sounds which have, that, uh, which have that initial twang, and then as we hold on to the note, a much slower decay down to a less rich sound, which is a lot more like our acoustic instruments do anyway. You can't do this with an ADSR. 
can't get this sort of longer evolving sound. Okay, um, as I say, we're kind of emulating an ADSR at the moment, but we'll discuss other things that we can do in a, in a moment. So finally, we've got EGR4, which is how quickly after we release a key, so this is our release section, if you like, uh, we drop down to EGL4. So if we're talking about a um, traditional ADSR type setup, EGL4 will be the end of our release cycle, so that'll be at zero. Um, now, at the moment, my carrier is also shutting down very, very quickly when I release. So I'm going to go over to the carrier here and I'm going to make this release a lot longer, or rather a lot slower by turning EGR4 down on the carrier. I'll do the same on my modulator as well. And now when I release a note, we get that kind of ringing out there. And if we want, um, if we want the harmonic content to drop off faster than the volume, we could make our modulator faster, but leave our carry where it is. You can hear there that we're moving back towards the fundamental much faster, but then we're still having the sustaining sort of rumbly resonance happening. Which is quite cool. Okay, so that's all presuming that what we're trying to emulate here is an ADSR, but we can actually do all sorts of other things. Um, because we have these four separate levels here. So for example, if we wanted to have a bit more of a wub on the way up, well, let me just uh, move back to my uh, EGR4 on my carrier, make it faster for the moment. Okay, there we go, there's our brass sound. Um, so we can have EGR1 a bit slower. But then we don't even have to have EGR1 going all the way up to its fullest point. So here we've got it only jumping up to um, 44, which means that we can actually have EGL2 go all the way up afterwards. So if we made EGR2 even slower, we'll have a quite quick jump up and then a much slower rise. Or we can do things uh, like have a traditional ADSR kind of setup, so a, a fast um, attack which goes all the way up to the full value there. Then we can have a fairly slow drop to a lower value here on EGL2, maybe 70 something. Near that drop off there. We can then set EGR3 to be quite slow as well. 32 is pretty much perfect, but have it higher than EGL2. So we're going to press a key, decay off, and then rise back up. Now you can't do this on an ADSR. And then we could, of course, if we fancied it, have our release. This is where things get very, very strange indeed. We can have our release jump back up, make sure that we're actually jumping back up on our carrier as well. Uh, and we can have these things which sort of linger in the sound. <laughs> have drones which you really can't do with an ADSR let's make this drone louder and be darker let's 
So we're going to click there because we're probably jumping too fast back up. Uh, so let's slow that down on both of our rates here. So these envelopes allow you so much additional control that you couldn't possibly achieve with a conventional ADSR. And when you start to combine these with more than just these two operators and you start to factor in your LFOs, some of the otherworldly sounds that you can create are just just fantastic. So just to recap on our envelopes, there are eight parameters that we are interested in. There's EGR1, which is how fast after a key is pressed we jump to EGL1. There's EGR2, which is how fast after the first part of the envelope is finished we jump to EGL2. There's EGR3, which is the same, but jumping to EGL3. And finally, there's EGR4, which is how long, sorry, how fast uh, after releasing the key, we jump to EGL4. We can emulate our classic ADSRs, but we can do so much more um, tremendously powerful envelopes. Um, we'll probably revisit the envelopes a little bit uh, later on in the uh, in the series when we start to introduce the other uh, operators into our sounds as well. Anyway, uh, um, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I hope that was useful for you. I hope you learned something about the envelopes on the Volker FM. Tremendously powerful. If you did enjoy the video, please make sure, big thumbs, give it the old thumbs up to give the video a like and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos on the Volker FM and other synthesis related stuff as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon.